This is Detective Ketcherson. Today's date is February 19th, 2015. This is reference case 1502-0658. This interview is being conducted at 5100 West Ina with Officer Rowan. Present also is uh, Detective Isagari and Officer Sample is sitting in as a representative for Officer, uh, Officer Rowan. Uh, the time is 11.25 hours. All right. Um, do you prefer us to to uh, refer to you as Officer Rowan or Danny? Danny. Dan. Dan. Danny. Okay. Or Daniel. Okay. <laughs> All right, Dan. All right. Um, today, is, you are a normal day shift officer, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what time do you come on? 0600. Sometimes 0430. <laughs> okay. So today you came on at... Around six o'clock. Okay. And then um, you were dispatched to a call over at the Walmart, correct? Or tell me how that happened. All right. I was actually working with uh, Detective Torres in reference to attempting to locate a subject that he needed a moth unit assistance. So I was assisting him. I heard the call coming out at 8280 with a subject who had just stolen a handgun and or a rifle. I didn't really pick that up. I knew it was a weapon of some sort. And he was fleeing on foot and was heading southeast through the Coles parking lot. At that immediate time, I was in the parking lot of Travel Lodge uh, attempting to locate the first subject for Detective Torres. So I responded towards Burlingame, thinking since he's on foot, I will attempt to cut him off and make contact. As I was coming down Burlingame towards travel, um, towards uh, Business Park Drive, I was flagged down by reps from 8280, and they gave me the direction of travel of the suspect holding a weapon, as per them. As I made the left-hand turn, which I was heading west to head south, I observed a male subject with a white T-shirt, black hair, and jeans on the east side of the street walking at a nice pace. As I attempted to drive up on him, I made verbal contact and also responded over the air for what I had come upon. Um, I requested that the subject stop. He did, and then immediately took the gun and put it under his chin and yelled something at me. I, I really don't recall what it was. It was a, I had my windows open, but I didn't really pick up what he said, so I backed off from him and just was in a following mode. We made a left-hand turn to head east on Coca-Cola, and then a subject in another car came up on me so fast that I stopped looking at him to look to the right, and he yelled at me to say, the gun was in a lock mode, and it was not going to fire. At that immediate time, I attempted again to make contact with him, and I was going to exit my car. And then the suspect or the subject turned and fired around into the skies, and I backed off from him. Now knowing, and the, the guy just looked at me and just gave me a shrug, like, oh, I didn't know that happened. And he used to say he let around go, I backed off. At that immediate time, I put out over the air the direction of travel of the subject, and because a round was let or discharged, I saw another mock unit coming from the south to the north against traffic, and I'm ordering them to stay away because the, the gun is now live. At that immediate point, I tried to speak to the subject again to disarm, and Officer Rapico came on my inside with his vehicle and stopped the threat, is what he did. And uh, he definitely did a, a job, uh, he did a good job. 
and stopping the threat. Um, and that was it. I exited my vehicle and walked towards the subject. At that point, Chriswell Scott came on, Mikey both came on, and Chriswell handcuffed while I observed with my weapon drawn to make sure the down subject was not going to reach for anything else he might have had. So, and then I was taken from there, removed from the scene by Officer Sample, and that was it. Okay. Let me, let me take you back just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, you're mm -hmm. out at the Travel Lodge on another assignment. Correct. And then you heard over the air that, what was it that you heard? What was the dispatch call? Uh, dispatch call, uh, again, I was thinking all about the other subject. And then it came up that um, another subject had stolen the gun from Walmart and was exiting and lost protection, was out on foot following the subject. At that point, dispatch was giving out different information. So I stopped doing what I was doing in Travel Lodge and continued on okay. towards that subject. Okay, so you're, you, you leave the Travel Lodge, which, it, which is the I-9, I-10 area. Correct. And you travel over through, All right. you I take. against traffic with my lights on. On the uh, frontage road. On the frontage road. To Burlingame. To Burlingame. So now you're going to be going down Burlingame in a westwardly direction. Correct. I make the, yeah. I'm coming, I went against traffic in the number two lane, against traffic, and I made the left onto Burlingame. Okay. Where I was flagged down by loss protection. Loss protection of who? I'm going to have to say it was... Um, I don't want their names. Do you know what business they were associated I with? I believe they were Walmart. Okay. Was the call that he had been at the Walmart? Yes. Okay. So some individuals flag you down. Yes. And they, what, it, what again is it that they tell you? They, tell, they told me that the subject walking on the, walking down Business Park Drive was armed with, I believe, their gun. Okay. Well, he stole our gun. Okay. All right. So you continue down Burlingame and you take I the... Make contact with him. And is it at the intersection of Business no, Park? No, it, it was at the intersection of, well, it was, let's just say about midway between Coca-Cola and Burlingame, I made contact with him. And he's on Business Park. He's on Business Park. Walking. Walking, and I came up on him very close with my patrol vehicle. Okay. Ordering him to stop. I, I believe I identified myself. Oh, I had no choice. Um, he turns and immediately wedges the weapon under his chin and tells me he will shoot himself. Okay. When you come up on him, you say you bring your patrol, patrol you're in your patrol car, correct? correct? And you said that you ordered him to stop. Correct. Are you using your PA or are no, you yelling out the window? I'm yelling out the window. Okay. I didn't get on the PA at all. I was trying to give direction over the department radio and him at the same time, and I couldn't pick up okay. the PA. That's okay. I just, I want to, I just, no. some of this is just clarification, so, I, so no, please understand. understand that. So as you're ordering out the window, he turns and faces you? He turns immediately and faces me. Okay, where was the gun at the time that he turns and faces you? Stuffed it immediately under his chin. Where was it prior to stuffing it, it was under in his chin? It was in his hand. He, he was actually holding it, I, I believe it was on the right side. As I came up on him closely, he immediately turns and takes the weapon and throws it under his jaw. Okay. And that's when I immediately back off from him. Okay. And he said something to you, correct? He said something. I, okay. I, I, and if you can't remember it, that's fine. I don't remember. Okay. So he says something he to you. He definitely made what was that. What was the impression that you got from the contact you he were having with him? He was going to take him? his head off. Okay. So at that point, you, you tell him Drop something. Drop the weapon. Okay. All right. And I back off. And How far I, back did you go? Uh, I, he was walking, and I stopped, and I'm, 
he kept walking and I stopped. And he kept going. And then he made the left. Actually, he, he was walking. I thought at first he was going to go further on Business Park Drive. because I think I said that. Then all of a sudden he stopped and made the turn to go down Coca-Cola. Okay. About 50 feet. And then he stops again, puts the gun under his jaw, and says something else to me. Then he pulls the gun away from his jaw and lets a round fly. I mean, I saw the blue smoke fly around. I said, ah. Okay. When he's walking, mm -hmm. where is he? He's got where the is gun under, under his chin. The whole time he's walking? Yeah, I'm going to say yes. Okay. And is he walking kind of casual, slowly, quickly? More How would you than, describe it? More than it? a casual speed. He was walking a little faster than a normal gait. Would you say that he was looking around? Was his was he at first looking? he looked at me, mm -hmm. and then like I wasn't gonna make contact. He turned his back towards me, mm -hmm. and just kept on walking. Okay. And at that point, is he looking around, or is he just he's, going like he has a purpose? He's he has a purpose. Okay. He's going. He has a purpose, and then he turned around when I made contact with him again, and he let the round go. Okay. So, he he walks away from you the first time. Right. He turns and goes. East on Coca-Cola. Correct. Okay. On it, the north side of the street. On the north side of the street. Um, do you recall if there was any vehicles or anything that he may have stopped in front None. of before he let that round off? None. Okay. So he stops at some point. Do you remember how far up Coca-Cola? About 50 feet. Okay. So about 50 feet. He stops, uh -huh. turns, uh -huh. and then discharges his weapon to show me that it is loaded. And that's when I get on the air to stay, uh, shots fired or he, he, he let a round go. I, I forget what I said. Okay. He, and at I just that wanted point. To let them know, I want to let everyone know that we have an armed subject to let them, in case it come up on the other side. Absolutely. So he shoots up into the, the air. Sky. Up in the sky. Okay. And at this time, you're following him in your vehicle. Correct. Your lights on? Yes. Okay. Sirens on? No. Okay. I didn't want to come up and alert him that I was coming up that way. I really, I, I actually startled him coming down. I do remember that because he didn't know I was there. He just thought loss protection was chasing him, and he had no, he didn't care. And then when I came up on him and identified myself, that's when he turned around and said, "Like, I'm here." Okay. You know, and that's when he took the gun. Out. And then on the second time, when he's on Coca-Cola Place, right. he turns around, he discharges. Oh, yeah. Um, did he, at that point, also put it up to his chin? After he discharged it. Okay. He had it under his chin, was able to activate the gun because the guy next to me was yelling at me saying that it, he can't fire it because it's locked. And that, that's why you don't listen to other people. He can't shoot it. It's locked. And I said, look, really? And then all of a sudden, it round goes off, and the guy just goes, and he was shocked. Okay. And I can't even tell you who it was. I know, I believe it was a silver car that pulled up alongside me. I thought it was one of our unlocks. Was it, was it our, one of our officers? No, it wasn't. Okay. It was somebody I, I had to assume from Walmart saying that this gun is locked. Okay. So you have no idea who that individual no, was. No, never seen and him before. Were they coming? That individual was it? That individual on Coca Cola Place. Correct. So they he followed were, me around as I made the left on the Coca Cola, staying on the north side of the street. The car went wide on me, and acknowledged me. And I looked at him for a second because I didn't know I had him and I had him at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at both, and he just yells out, "The, the gun is locked." He doesn't know it. The gun is locked. Okay. And that time, he turns again and then lets the round go. And what did you tell him at that time? I the really, subject. I don't. I don't. I, I know I yelled at him to, to drop the weapon. Okay. Then what does that subject do? Um, turns his back on me and puts the gun under his jaw and continually walks. With the gun under his jaw? Yeah. Okay. He's walking on the north side and he's coming close to the storage place on the left, or the north side of the street. Mm -hmm. And at that media time, Officer Rupico comes under me 
and his vehicle makes contact with the subject. Okay. So they're, they're walking by the storage place? Correct. And where did, were you aware that Officer Rupico was with you no. at all with this? I, I thought I was the only officer on the scene. Okay. I, until I saw, because I was looking, I kept my eye on him the whole time. Mm -hmm. So I was looking to the east and I saw one of our units coming up and I yelled to them or tried to get there, whatever, to stop and back off because the gun is now loaded. Mm -hmm. And he just discharged around. Mm -hmm. So I wanted him away. I didn't want him in the line of fire. Okay. And I believe he probably would have kept on going. That the individual would have kept on going? Oh, no doubt in my mind. Okay. Um, were, did you feel there was a concern for the, the people that were at the storage place? There was no, again, I did not even see anyone in the storage place. My whole entire mindset was on him walking. Okay. And I did not see Officer Rapico coming in on my left, which was the north side of the street. Okay. And Officer Pico just went and he took out my threat. Okay. I, I need to talk to you a little bit about it, and I can hear that it's really emotional for you. Um, but I need to talk to you a little bit more other than that he took out your threat. I need to get a little more description about what's going on. Are you going to be okay? Yep. Sure? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. So, Officer Rapico comes to the inside, to your left-hand side. Correct. Okay. Um, at this point, the subject is in the roadway on the sidewalk. Oh, subject was walking from the street onto, I'm going to have to say, the rock area and then walking across the pads of the storage and walking on the parking area, right next to the parking area, right next to the storage area, on the east side of it, there's a parking pad mm -hmm. where customers would come up and park their vehicle. He was walking along that parking pad, but he was coming close to a retaining wall, which I have to say was five or six feet, a brick retaining wall. Okay. And that's when Officer Rapico came in, came in and got my threat. Okay, Officer Rapico's driving a fully marked vehicle? Correct. Okay, and your individual, when you say he took out your threat, what did Officer Rapico do? Um, his vehicle struck the subject and placed him down. Okay, and then was, you were talking about that retaining wall? Right. Did they, did Officer Rupico strike him before the retaining wall or after the retaining wall? Hit him before the retaining wall. Okay. And then at that point, what did Officer Rupico do? Um, continued on a fraction, exits his vehicle, and then comes back to the subject. Chriswell Scott comes to the right of the subject. I exit. The three of us are there. We are drawn down on him. Someone yells, place him in handcuffs, and I believe Rapico did place him in handcuffs while I covered and Scott covered. And then I think he might have had a problem with one arm, and maybe Scott continued to handcuff while I maintained cover. Okay. Did you see anybody other than law enforcement out on that street? No. Okay, there were no other civilians? Uh, the only civilians that were there were one, maybe two, that came out of the storage. The subject who came on my side, I don't know where he went to, another car came through, and two, which I have to say, lost protection, walked down the street, okay. I believe. You stated that when um, the other officers, and at the time you weren't even real sure who they were, but the, as the officers were coming, he'd already fired the shot. You wanted everybody to back off for safety reasons. Correct. Correct. And then you also made the statement that you felt that he was just going to continue in the in the oh. manner that he was. He was, he was gonna. He was intent on either hurting himself or hurting someone else. It, he did not want to stop. He 
in his face, I see it like right now, he was dead on, dead serious. He did have the opportunity to lay around into my car though, and did not. Because he turned around on me and he just put the gun under his chin. Do you perceive a threat to the, the community? Definitely. Okay. Um, had he not been stopped, do you see, do you believe that he would have continued to be a threat to the community? Definitely. I believe he would have taken somebody with him to stop me. Okay. I do believe that. fully marked Marino Police Department vehicle today? Correct. And you are in full uniform as you're sitting here talking to us? Correct. Um, and again, the the the, inst the matter or the gentleman you were looking for earlier with Detective Orr is a totally separate, unrelated matter. Separate, unrelated matter. Okay. Um, okay. And again, you gave commands to stop. Did you hear any other officers give commands? I didn't hear a thing. Okay. Okay. That's all I thought. The other thing I, I, I did hear was someone yell to handcuff him because okay. they thought he was still a threat and that's why I covered okay. uh, Would it be standard procedure uh, to handcuff uh, a, a, a subject that's a threat? Correct. Okay. Anything that we haven't asked you that you think is important? Anything that um, you can recall that we, we didn't cover with you? Well, er everything just happened very quickly. Um, my, my biggest concern was alerting us about his direction of travel and I really thought that the gun was not loaded because it came out from mm -hmm. 8280 supposedly. Okay. Who let, you keep referring to numbers. Can you, can you tell me what 8280 is? 8280 is? North Cotero Road would be Walmart. Okay. And they said that the, the weapon was taken from them and then when two subjects from Walmart flagged me down to give me the direction of, actually, I believe it was three people just waved at me. And I got in first, attempted to stop. No, that's it. And once he, once he discharges the round into the air at that point, are you fairly certain that that, that there is a, a certainly a threat? Correct. There was a threat prior to, but I was, um, apprehensive because the gentleman next to me stated that it's it's locked. It should not fire. And it did. All right. I don't know where he found the you know the, the ammo for it, but he did. All right. Anything else? No. He was he was in the process of let this is say charging the weapon. I, he kept on charging something. Kept. What playing with it. What do you refer to as charging? Um, putting a round in it. Did you see him put a round in no, it? No, I did not. But he kept doing it like, like it was locked, and he was having a hard time with it. But he was doing something to it as he's walking. Then he put it under his head, take it away from his head. Put it under his head, and then boom. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay, we're going to conclude this statement. It's 1148 hours.